Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for this call with Tony Khan to discuss this Saturday's AEW Full Gear pay-per-view live from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items in the interest of time and ensuring that we give as many people opportunities as possible. We kindly ask that you refrain from asking any two-parted questions and also please try to keep your, focus, your questions focused on this weekend's pay-per-view. I'm going to turn it over to Tony for some opening thoughts, and then we will open the line for questions. Tony? Hey, everyone. I'm so excited. This is uh, one of my favorite times of the year. I love the full gear pay-per-view. I love the holidays, and I love wrestling around this time of the year. And I'm really excited to talk to all of you. There's a lot of great stuff happening in AEW and excited to talk to you all about it. We're on the verge of the most exciting uh, event in the most exciting development in AEW's history, which is our upcoming media rights deal. And now AEW being a, a streaming property for our shows and the simulcast that's coming. Uh, there's a lot of really great things in our future. And, and the biggest thing in our future right now is full gear. It's right in front of us. And I can't wait for Saturday night. I'm excited to answer all your questions and I'll try to take as many as I can. And if I don't, get a chance uh, to, to take a question now. Hopefully I can uh, speak to some of you after the pay-per-view too. Uh, but we'll try to get as many as we can right now. Uh, Jim, we can fire away. Thanks, Tony. Um, we are going to get started first with uh, Jim Barcelone of the Miami Herald, who will be followed by Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net. Jim? I'm curious with all the things going on, especially with the event coming up, and also the winter live events announcement. That was really big. I'm just curious with uh, going into this event and into the new year with all these announcements of all these events coming up and tickets going on sale. Is there any thought of new ways, new marketing ways to get these shows going uh, ahead of time to get the word out for them? Or is it status quo? Uh, well, we're definitely trying to get the word out about our events. That's why we released a schedule uh, with so many uh, great towns and great venues that were coming to hit uh, through the end of 2024 into 2025. We're really excited about Revolution. Uh, that it will be a debut for us in one of the biggest and best arenas in America. Uh, I'm really excited about that opportunity. And uh, I think... We were going to be visiting a lot of new venues, a lot of great cities we've been to before and, and, and some new places. Uh, but absolutely, you know, trying to hit uh, top markets and uh, get the word out about our live events is a top priority to us. Uh, and uh, for me personally, that's why I really wanted to see uh, that release out there uh, where people would know what the upcoming shows are going to be and, and have time to plan and even have time to budget for it as we're going into the holiday season. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Up next, we have Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net, who will be followed by Dominic D'Angelo with One True Sport. Tony, can you hear me? Yep. Hey. Hey, I was hoping you could share an update on how Grand Slam Australia tickets are moving. And, and for that matter, whether you've decided if that event is going to be a pay-per-view, a TV taping, or just a big live event. Uh, well, it's, you know, very, we're very excited to make our debut there. Uh, we, we have sold thousands of tickets in the market, and uh, it'll be a great debut for us in Brisbane. And uh, hopefully the first of many shows down there. Uh, and as far as how it's going to run, I think it will present some challenges uh, in terms of the timing of the event and the time zones, as far as presenting it as a conventional pay-per-view here, uh, domestically, I think it's something to keep an eye on. The, one of the great things about our media rights deal now is the opportunity to, uh, have our TV shows also their streaming specials. Uh, all of the Dynamite and Collision episodes will be on TBS and TNT, respectively, but they're also going to live stream on Max, which is really exciting. And I think it's a great opportunity for AEW. And uh, Grand Slam Australia is in Q1, and it's going to be one of the major AEW events uh, for sure. 
And uh, it was part of the big live events announcement. Of course, we announced some TV shows, and uh, it'll be a little bit of a different cadence for us going to Australia versus uh, a normal TV week. Uh, But it'll be a great event, and everyone's going to be able to see it. I think the time zones present some challenges and, you know, asking everyone to pay as a pay-per-view for that. So uh, it's definitely something we're going to make available to our fans here domestically, though, for Grand Slam Australia. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony, and thanks, Jason. Dominic D'Angelo with One True Sport is up next and will be followed with a writing question. Hey. Hey, can you hear me okay, Tony? Now I do. Hey, man. Hey, good. Good to he- talk to you, Tony. Uh, looking forward to the pay-per-view this weekend. Uh, did want to talk about uh, Chris Jericho as the ROH champion being the new wave eh, and everything like that. Uh, is h- putting the title on him, does that speak to some some bigger plans in place for what you have for the Ring of Honor brand moving forward in 2025 and uh, in the years to come as well? Well, Chris Jericho is one of the biggest names in AEW. Uh, he's now a nine-time world champion, and uh, any championship he holds, uh, he adds credibility to it. Uh, I love working with Chris, and I think Chris is uh, one of the biggest names in pro wrestling. So absolutely, it, it adds a lot of prestige to Ring of Honor, having Chris Jericho as the world champion. And uh, I think it does speak to... Uh, the ability of Ring of Honor to not only feature top stars in the company, but also uh, potential for media rights excitement around ROH. And there definitely has been some. We've had some some serious interest in ROH, and Chris Jericho as a world champion can only help. So that's a great question. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, up next, we have a write-in from Andrew Baydala with Final Bell Media, and we're going to follow this up with Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy. So, Tony, here's what I have. I wanted to ask about the involvement of the Costco guys in the Full Gear pay-per-view. How has that experience been for you and the team, and do you think we'll see more collaborations like this in AEW moving forward to appeal to a different demographic or audience? Well, it's been tremendous. It's been absolutely tremendous. It's uh, something I've enjoyed. I have learned a lot about uh, marketing and, and uh, entrepreneurship from AJ and Justice. Those guys are tremendous. I really enjoy talking to them. Tomorrow I'm going to be on Fox Business Network talking about this collaboration uh, with Big Boom AJ. And they've built a great brand. They're a really nice family. It's nice to see a father and son working together. And I think that's part of the appeal. Like, clearly America and people all over the world want to see this father and son. They're having a good time. They like spending time together. And they like watching Justice and the Rizzler grow up. And uh, it's it's really a nice thing. And I personally have really had my eyes opened to what they've been able to do. Uh, it was so cool to hear their name on the tonight show and to be featured on the tonight show and have AEW discussed on such a prestigious platform. That was really cool. And that's just one example of the kind of high profile media that big boom, AJ and big justice have been bringing to AEW. And we're very excited to have the Rizzler at full gear too. I think that's awesome. And, uh, it's a great collaboration and absolutely it's indicative of, uh, the kind of great collaborations we want to have with our marketing partners. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, Andrew. Amy Nemedy with WrestleJoy is up next, followed by Dave Meltzer with the Wrestling Observer. Amy? Hi, Tony. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hi. So I wanted to talk about Orange Cassidy and John Moxley for the AEW World Championship at Full Gear. In the November Rain video package, we really got a deep understanding into the story of both of these men as they're vying for the AEW championship, but also fighting for the spirit in a way of AEW. They're both tied in singles matches. Orange had beaten Mox to retain the international championship at Full Gear last year, while Mox had beat him to win it at All Out. 
but they both have gotten darker, grittier, and more intense as they've been sort of embroiled in a battle of psychological warfare. What are the stakes as you see them in this match? And will either man be the same coming out of it? Thank you for your time. Well, that's great. I appreciate you asking. It's a great history with Orange Cassidy and John Moxley and uh, very fitting to come back to full gear last year uh, and, and look back at what's happened since John Moxley and Orange Cassidy are in very different places. And now they're in this world championship fight and uh, they're two of the greatest stars ever in AEW. When we launched the company, uh, John Moxley stood atop AEW from the very beginning. And Orange Cassidy is somebody who's had a much more methodical rise to prominence. And I think Orange Cassidy does a lot of things methodically. And uh, I am very excited about this match. I think that they represent very different parts of the history of AEW, and then they've intersected in some of these great matches, great moments. They also clashed in front of over 81,000 people at Wembley Stadium in the, in the biggest stadium stampede of all time. I think uh, with Orange and Mox, there uh, is always an opportunity for violence, and uh, I think that this match in particular uh, embodies two different two different voices in AEW and two historical figures that uh, have great significance in our five year run that we've had here in AEW, and uh, I think it'll be a great great match. And I do think the company will be better off for it. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Amy. Dave Meltzer is up next with the Wrestling Observer, followed by Joel Torres of Contralona. Dave? Dave, go ahead. Can you hear me? Dave, are you on mute? Can you hear me? Oh, now we do. Yeah, hey, Dave. Okay, okay. Hey, Tony, how are you? Hey, good. Thanks, Sam. So, um, I saw the new schedule and everything, um, that there's some dates where you're going to be doing, um, you know, Collision and Dynamite on the same night. And on those weeks, I mean, do you have, like, are there alternative plans for Ring of Honor? And also, I guess the other, the main, the bigger question is, is you sort of a, 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 a answered this as far as Ring of Honor, but as far as, like, domestic and international television media rights deals. Um, do you have any, like, where do things, do you have any things like that you could kind of like let us know as far as like how international looks going forward for next year and as far as domestic, um, how close you might be on whether it's Ring of Honor or another AEW show um, coming up, um, you know, going forward for, for 2025? Well, it's a great question, uh, Dave, and there's a couple things in there. You know, the there's very few. It's a low percentage, and it's not supposed to be uh, a common thing at all, and it's not going to be a regular occurrence. Rare, rarely are we taping the shows on the same night. Um, the only time where you really see it happen more than once uh, consecutively is around the Australia event, which is a little bit of a different cadence for us, like I said, because we have to um, film content uh, and then fly the crew uh, internationally, and it's a very long flight and a long trip. So uh, it's not going to be common, and very rarely would we tape those shows on the same night. Um, typically, it's, it's around an international trip or uh, some special occurrence. So uh, the cadence of taping still is far from final for next year. And there's still great media opportunities out there for AEW. And we're still having a lot of active negotiations about AEW and Ring of Honor. Uh, one thing that we know for sure, you know, obviously that schedule of events that we put out for early 25, and of course the events we've already released for late 2024. And we also know that Dynamite and Collision have a very strong home for a long time to come on max streaming and also for dynamite on TBS and collision on TNT. 
very, very rarely would we take those shows together. And the, the, the handful of times where you see it, it's around some kind of uh, touring or major event uh, that is conducive to a double taping, which I generally don't want to do. Um, but there are times where it makes sense for scheduling. And it's just, the, you know, and that striking that balance is important to me because it's not something I want to be doing very often. You know, I, I try to do a lot of live dynamites and for collision, I think as much as we can keep them as standalone events uh, as possible, it's great. And as you see the early part of the year, when we launch collision on max, we've got some great live ones coming up uh, the first, first few weeks of the year. And then um, around some of the international shows, there is a little bit of that double taping, but, but I, that is definitely not going to be the norm. Thanks Dave. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Tony. Joel Torres with Contra Lona is up next, followed by Ricky Chino with Sports Illustrated. Joel? I want to ask you about Mexico and AW now broadcasting their, their shows on Mexican networks. Is part of the plan to go in 2025 to Mexico or other Latin American countries, not, not as part of CMLL, but as AEW itself. Thank you. Uh, well, it's going to be a great opportunity for us. Uh, so just to make sure I have, uh, can, can, can you, would you mind asking again, just to make sure I have the whole question? I don't want to miss anything. It's, it's good. It's okay. Um, now AEW Dynamite Collision is part of, I think it's for Fox uh, Network in Spanish in Mexico, right? Yes. So, yes, it is. Yes, exactly. So I want to know if it's, is part of your plan to invade now Mexico and other Latin American countries, not as part of CMLL shows, but as AW itself? Well, it's a great question. Uh, I, I've addressed this a bit, but just to reiterate, I would love to bring AEW to Mexico. I'm very excited about the partnerships that we have in Mexico. We have a great media partner with AEW and Fox Sports Mexico now. That's a, a new deal that we're very excited about. Also, we have great relationships on the ground with CMLL, the oldest professional wrestling promotion on the planet. They are doing amazing work. I really uh, respect what they do, and I think we have a great collaboration. And the stars from AEW have been very well received in Mexico. When you watch a CMLL shows, and we've seen stars like John Moxley, Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson, uh, Mercedes Monet, Claudio Castagnoli, and many others go to these events, and they're getting huge, huge star reactions. It's amazing. And uh, it's also great for us to have great stars from CMLL come to AEW. I would like to bring AEW to Mexico. If I could pick any venue to run in Mexico, I would love to bring AEW to Arena Mexico and to do AEW at Arena Mexico with the blessing of CMLL. And I do believe that it is possible. We've had great conversations. I would only want to do this uh, with the full support of CMLL. And I think with the great relationship we have, I do believe it's possible. And it's something I would really, really like to do to bring AEW to Mexico for live events now that we've got a great media partner in, in Fox Sports Mexico. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Tony, and thanks, Joel. Ricky Chino with Sports Illustrated. You are up next, followed by Arunava Goshal with Sports Kita. Rick? Hello? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, so this is kind of uh, out of the blue, so I, I, I do apologize asking for somebody who's not on the on the show this weekend, but I wanted to get your thoughts on um, Harley Cameron. I'm working on a piece of, about her, and she is just somebody that is in, in, continues to impress me. Um, anytime I get to watch her on, on Collision or Rampage or any of these shows that she gets booked on, she just does not... You know, come off as somebody who has less than 50 matches under her belt. The the match she had with Nisha Akawa on Saturday was uh, really impressive to me. I just wanted to get your thoughts on her overall uh, development so quickly in her career and how how close you think she is to becoming a, a breakout performer in a really stacked women's division. 
Well, Harley Cameron is fantastic. I think Harley Cameron brings great energy to any show she's on. She is being utilized in a variety of different roles in AEW. And anytime we can utilize Harley Cameron, I'm excited about it. I think she's so fantastic uh, in terms of her energy. I think uh, her delivery in her promos is fantastic. She is a great athlete, and she is really developing as a wrestler. And I think Harley Cameron is a prime example to me of uh, a rising talent in AEW, somebody that's building great momentum and has a good, great connection with our fans. Uh, so Harley Cameron is somebody that is really uh, – earning their spot on any AEW show that they're on. And I think she's doing a great job. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Tony. And thank you, Rick. Uh, Aruna Vagoshal with Sports Kita is up next, and he'll be followed by John Alba with Wealth of Geeks. Aruna Va? Arunava, go ahead. Uh, sorry for the for that. Uh, hi, Tony. Hi. Yeah, so sorry to ask something not full gear related, but recently we saw the shocking news of Tony Storm announcing her retirement. So just want to know if you had a chance to talk to her uh, and give us a little bit of detail what's actually going on. Thank you. Well, Timeless Tony Storm has been a great world champion for AEW. Uh, I think that uh, reports of her demise have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, I still expect Tony Storm uh, will have a great wrestling career, but she's really struggling, clearly, uh, with what's happened. She she lost the world title. Uh, She lost her protege. And I think she feels like she lost everything, and now she's lost. And uh, I hope that Tony Storm can find herself and uh, come back to us here in AEW because Timeless Tony Storm is a great part of AEW, definitely. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony. John Alba with Wealth of Geeks, you're up next, followed by Alex Hunt with Inside the Ropes. John? John's breaking down Nick's footage. Looks like John's audio has been disconnected. John's Um, watching the New York Knicks. uh, Why don't we go back to John shortly uh, once his audio reconnects, and we will go with Alex Hunt from Inside the Ropes. Alex? Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi there. Um, sorry. So, um, yeah, so 2024 Full Gear is going to mark well, one year since Kenny Omega competed on pay-per-view. He's been recently kind of announcing he's going to be um, fighting Gabe Kidd in the Upland Wrestle Dynasty show. Can you give us any more information as to when um, we might see Kenny Omega back in an AW ring? So that, I think that is an excellent question. Uh, I would love to have Kenny Omega back in AEW as soon as possible. He's one of our greatest wrestlers ever. We work really closely with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, We'll be collaborating with them on the Wrestle Dynasty event uh, to make it a huge show. And uh, very excited to get Kenny Omega back, hopefully very soon, in AEW. It's something that uh, will help us a lot and means a lot to us. Uh, And... uh, Absolutely, if we can get Kenny Omega going as soon as possible, I think it would be a a great thing for us. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited that his health is better and uh, he sounds a lot better and uh, looks so much better. And 
it will be a great thing for AEW to get Kenny Omega back here uh, very soon. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Tony. We're going to try John Alba one more time here. John, are you ready to go? Tony, can you hear me? Yeah, John, okay. you were busy oh. breaking down the Knicks over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was going to ask you about your collaboration with Carl Anthony Towns, but I think that might have to wait till next time. But I uh, appreciate you making the time. Uh, excited to head over to Full Gear this weekend, Prudential Center, a venue you've run a lot in the past to a lot of success, uh, one of the larger venues you typically run too. Um, so in regards to the new arenas that you announced that you're going to be running uh, into next year, a lot of them noticeably are going to require configuration change, more intimate environments. Was there any strategy into how some of those maybe smaller, more intimate venues could play into the presentation of the television product? Well, I'll give you an example. I think it's a, you know, if you look his back at history, I think looking back several years, even to our first year of television, one of the best venues we run is Cedar Park, Texas, around Austin. I love that venue. Every time we go there, the energy is great. The shows are great. It's a great venue for TV. And then you mentioned the Prudential Center. What a great pay-per-view venue for us it's been. We've had some great TV shows there as well, but a lot of great events, including uh, Full Gear a few years ago and now going back for Full Gear two years later this weekend. Uh, the Prudential Center is an amazing venue for us. I'm excited to run Crypto.com Arena in L.A., formerly the Staples Center. And um, I think some of these great TV venues that we're going to be Going to some of them returns and a lot of new venues. I think it's trying to capture that energy of some of our best television shows that have been in some uh, really intense, exciting, packed venues uh, like that Cedar Park, Texas venue just outside Austin, Texas. Uh, I love that building. We're going to be running that building again. early next year in 2025. And I was looking for more venues like that. And I think that we've got some great venues of that size. I hope they all have the same great energy those fans around Austin bring, because every time we go there, I just love that place. And I think uh, you'll see some more venues of that size and scope and hopefully the same kind of energy. And uh, if we get all the TV shows with that energy 52 weeks a year, then we'll be in really, really great shape. So that's some of the idea between look look into TV venues of that mold and then also running some of the biggest and best arenas throughout the country for our big pay-per-view shows too. And thanks for asking, John. Thank you so much, John. Up next, we have Bill Pritchard with WrestleZone, and he will be followed by Ella J, a wrestling gal. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Hey, very well. Thanks for asking. Uh, so I wanted to ask about the uh, the winter schedule that just came out the other day. Uh, Fight for the Fallen in Asheville was listed as the, the first show streaming on Max. Uh, I just wanted to see if you could walk us through like how you arrived at that being the first show to stream on Max, uh, considering all the challenges uh, that people are facing in uh, Asheville. It, was it always going to be the first week of January, or you know, did you have any obstacles to sort of get around to make this happen? Well, the goal is to do everything we can to bring AEW and the support that Fight for the Fallen will offer to the people in Asheville and the hurricane damage and uh, the aftermath, it's its tragic and terrible. And I just wanted to do something to try to help out and also to put a spotlight on what these people are dealing with and what a terrible, terrible situation this is. And Fight for the Fallen is a great wrestling show year in, year out. And We've also helped a lot of people throughout the years with this event. And 
I'm hopeful that we can do something good here again. Uh, nothing can ever turn back the clock and undo all the damage that the hurricane's done around Asheville and, and the East Coast. But I do think uh, it, it's the right thing to do to come in and try to help and also uh, to make Fight for the Fallen one of our signature AEW wrestling events, the first ever AEW Dynamite on Max. I think from the very beginning, we're showing that this streaming era, we're going to put our very best foot forward and that best foot forward is fight for the fallen. I take it really seriously. Uh, I really absolutely do love this. I love pro wrestling and uh, being able to use pro wrestling then to do something good to try to help the community is even better. And that's the idea here. It's going to be a, a big week for AEW and for Warner Brothers Discovery with the simulcast launch of AEW Dynamite on Max and TBS, and then later that week with AEW Collision launching on Max and TNT, and uh, making this week Fight for the Fallen is a huge part of our plans. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, Bill. Ella J, a wrestling gal, is up next, followed by Mike Johnson with PWI. Ella? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hi, Ella. Um, obviously, M Mina Shirakawa will be joining Tony Storm at her AEW Women's Championship celebration. I was wondering if you could shed some light on how long we can expect Mina back in the AEW realm. Specifically, will we see her beyond full gear? I am optimistic to keep Mina with us a lot. Uh, Mina Shirakawa fits in really well in AEW, and she's been a great, great part of the show. We'd like to have her here as much as possible. So coming up after full gear, I'm optimistic Mina Shirakawa can join us more frequently. And uh, we'll see what what that can be as far as her schedule with AEW and stardom uh, simultaneously. But we, we have a great relationship with stardom now. Uh, love working with stardom and Mr. Okada and, and the great Bushi Road executives. And Mina Shirakawa is a great star for stardom, but also now a great star for AEW here in America and all over the world. So I'm glad you asked because I uh, feel that Mina Shirakawa adds a lot to AEW and I would like her to stay uh, indefinitely, more regularly, and be with us more frequently. So thankfully, stardom is uh, open to that. And they've been very kind about opening her schedule up to us. So I, I expect to see Mina Shirakawa here a lot in AEW going forward. Great. Thank you, Thanks, Tony. Brad. Appreciate it. And thank you, Ella. Mike Johnson with Pro Wrestling Insider is up next, followed by Kristen Ackley with Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Mike, go ahead. Uh, that's uh, Pro Wrestling Insider, actually, PW Insider. Um, hey, Tony, how are you? Hey, Mike, doing well. Um, with all the announcements for the first quarter of the year, including the Fight for the Fallen debuting on Max, the one email that we've gotten more than anything is, is there any update on when pay-per-views may start appearing on Max? Do you have a target date for that yet? And if so, do you have an idea about uh, what the pricing will be on Max versus if fans order on pay-per-view or Triller and other places? I, it's too soon for me to be able to give uh, an update on that, and a lot of that is in the hands of our amazing media partners to whom we are very grateful at Warner Brothers Discovery. We have a great relationship there, and it is a blessing to bring pro wrestling back to TBS and TNT and now launch pro wrestling for the first time ever on Max. I'm really excited about it, and I know that the simulcast of Dynamite and Collision will be something the fans can look forward to to kick off 2025. Uh, the pay-per-view delivery on Max will require a lot of upgrades and uh, technical work on the back end. Uh, I don't want to uh, put a date out there that I'm not really sure on, and I know that there's so much work to be done 
by the Max engineering team to provide that capability on the pay-per-views. Um, so I, I will uh, have to punt on the coverage of when the uh, when that question uh, you asked about when the uh, timing when the pay-per-views will launch on Max as far as that being the service to carry them. We've got a lot of great pay-per-view providers in the interim now with Bleacher Report uh, sunsetting the pay-per-view capability. We do have, uh, of course, uh, YouTube, PPV.com, Triller, Fight TV, uh, and all of our cable and satellite providers, a number of other ways to see the pay-per-view uh, in the interim and really looking forward to when Max gets that delivery system up and running. And I think when it is up and running, we do have uh, a plan for the delivery, including uh, how that will work for the Max subscribers. Uh, and it's just a matter of time before we can roll it out. But it's something that will definitely be heading to the fans at some point in 2025. But uh, for the Max pay-per-view delivery system, uh, you know, it could be several months at least, I think. Thanks for asking, Mike. Thank you, Mike, and my apologies. Thank you for correcting me earlier. Kristen Ashley with PW Illustrated is up next, followed by Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful. Kristen? Hi, Tony. Hey. Hi. Okay. Um, so AEW has done super, really, like really well with giving opportunities and molding talent from the indies. You can clearly see that on every single one of your pay-per-views. How does AEW plan to foster uh, talent development in the future in the wake of the WWE ID program? Uh, well, it's it's a great question. Uh, I think that we still are looking at top young wrestlers every week international wrestlers uh, and domestically. Uh, it will be interesting to see the first time we uh, have a, uh, a talent that is under one of those that, that we bring in. I think I'm not completely sure how those deals are going to work. I've heard some stuff about there being matching rights with the people that have signed them, which would be an interesting thing. I have uh, some thoughts on it, uh, but uh, I will reserve my judgment until I actually until I actually uh, test such a mechanism. So uh, I, I only know what I've read about them, uh, but uh, it's interesting. And I think for us, we have a great roster right now of wrestlers spanning all ages. Uh, from very, very young wrestlers to decades of experience and uh, identifying young talent is really important to us. So it's uh, something to continue looking at. We bring a lot of top young wrestlers into AEW and Ring of Honor. And uh, so far it has not been a major conflict uh, with any of those talents being signed elsewhere. And it, impeding their ability to work with us, but it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how that goes in, in the coming future. Obviously that's a, a recent development. Uh, thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony. And thanks, Kristen. Sean Ross Sapp with Fightful is next, followed by Rich Fan with the Pro Wrestling Torch. Sean. Hey, we saw at least what appears to be an adjustment in the, the live event strategy and announcing a, a number of shows, at least through March, uh, well ahead of time, as well as some venues that are different. For example, Broadbent Arena instead of uh, the Yum Center, uh, a new venue in Phoenix. I know you all go, are going to Clarksville and Knoxville for the first time, uh, the new arena in Oceanside. What all has went into determining what size venues you should run, how far ahead you should announce them, and the like? Well, it's a great question. I mean, something I've said, I mentioned it earlier on this call, not to be redundant, but I love that venue that we're running in Cedar Park. That venue is coming up, and a lot of the venues are like that. I think that's one of our best TV venues, and every time we do TV there, it's excellent. Also, in Cardiff, 
uh, that venue and the people were excellent. And you can't replicate the people. You can't replicate the people at the TV in August in Cardiff and bring them to all these other markets. Those people were fantastic for the show. And that arena was fantastic, and uh, it was a great night and great go-home TV. And then the shows we've done in Austin, I can't replicate the people. We can bring the show back to Cedar Park, which we're going to do. And I, I think they do a fantastic job, those fans, every time we're there. And I think there are other venues of that scale that are just great for us, where you get several thousand people screaming their heads off and it can be a really great experience and different from the different from that huge pay-per-view scale. And I think to get that energy 52 weeks a year, multiple times a week for television, uh, identifying some great venues that can have that really intense energy, uh, and also markets where the fans are going to bring it and bring the energy. That's really important too. So uh, we're looking at buildings and markets where there's belief that the, the fans can really get it going for us. That's the idea uh, and the mindset behind that. So I, I'm very optimistic about these arenas and, and these fans and these shows. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I'm uh, very optimistic about, that announcement and and the shows we're going to be running in those venues. Thanks for asking, Sean. Thank you, Tony. Rich Fan with Pro Wrestling Torch is up next, and he'll be followed with a write-in from Joey Hayden at the Dallas Morning News. Rich? A few years ago, actually five to be exact, I asked you in a face-to-face -face question about the uh, – chance to have single stars that were black in the main event main event scene and fast forward five years you know have a diverse array of talent there in your company i just wanted to talk about how you balance that because you have these big name free agents like bobby ashley or mercedes but then you also have folks who you invested in such as uh red velvet or even the ring of honor champion athena in terms of giving her an opportunity to showcase a side of herself she might not have in other com companies could you talk through how you've done that and what your plans are for 2025 in terms of just maintaining the balance between all of your roster as you keep growing. Well, it's, it, I appreciate you asking. Uh, we have a great roster of wrestlers here. And as you said, some of them have arrived to us via free agency. And then there's some that joined us working their way up the card. And I think Athena really is more of an example to be honest of, somebody that was a big free agent and has also unlocked part of her personality in a different way. And I, I think that's awesome as well. That's a little different from somebody, you know, to compare the ring of honor world champion, Athena, look at the ring of honor women's world T television champion um, with red velvet, who has been with us for several years and really worked her way up the card uh, and both Athena and Red Velvet have worked their way up the card here. Don't get me wrong, but uh, Athena came in as a free agent with more experience. And Red Velvet has been with us for several years and worked her way into this championship position. I think they're both excellent. And I think something to uh, think about is there's so many different ways to arrive in a prominent position. Everybody wants to be, for the most part, in wrestling, for the most part, in a position of prominence. And there are a lot of ways to get there. I think right now the roster is in a very strong position overall. And we'll continue trying to bring in the best big-name free agents, but also, uh, as you said, we have a really diverse array of great stars and we've been able to bring in top three agents to strengthen the company. I think that's really great for us. And uh, it's something I'm always trying to strike a balance of who the top stars in the company are. Uh, it's a mix of the homegrown stars and the free agents. It, it applies to that diverse group that you mentioned. And it also, I mean, it applies to, I think throughout AEW, it's a mix of 
big name free agents that came to AEW and people that have risen through the ranks here over the years. And I think that really the thing that generally bonds people together here, the, the common tying thread is these are people that love wrestling. And uh, it's what is true of so many people in AEW from the beginning is this is a group of people that really, really love wrestling and want to be here. And uh, I do think however somebody however somebody arrived in that top spot, however somebody works their way into a position of prominence, it does matter. It does matter the path they took to get there because we acknowledge history. We see the history. We want to uh, respect the history of wrestlers and their story and, and the journey they took to get to where they are. But I also think uh, we've been making a real effort to have a balance of our own homegrown stars and bring in top free agents. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony. We have a write in here from Joey Hayden at the Dallas Morning News, and that will be followed by Brandon Thurston with WrestleNomics. So Joey writes, what were your impressions overall of last night's y'all in kickoff party in Arlington in terms of things like fan turnout, using, utilizing Texas Live as a facility, et cetera? I really well, very encouraged and excited about what's happening down in Arlington around AEW all in Texas. It's been great support from the local market, and we've had a great experience down there with uh, the fans in Arlington and, and the government. They are so supportive of this event, and I think the AEW Live Events team has done a great job. Uh, everyone had a great time at the party, and that Texas Live is really a cool thing. You know, AEW, a lot of us got to spend a lot of time in Arlington and around that area because we were doing shows there every week and it got me really pumped about all in. I'm so excited for the event and I just really, really, uh, I can't stress enough. I'm so grateful to the fans there around Arlington, Texas and, and fans from all over Texas. They always are so loud and so passionate about AEW. And anytime we've ever gone there, we've had a great experience. The residency at the eSports Stadium in Arlington was fantastic. And to be able to go back to that town and put on our biggest domestic event of all time, uh, I feel very good about it. Those people are great wrestling fans, and I think we're going to have great success and there's going to be people that are going to want to come from all over America and I think all over the world to be a part of this event. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Tony. We have Brandon Thurston with WrestleNomics up next, and then we're going to close with Brian Zillum of PW Torch. Brandon, you're up. Uh, I was wondering if you could give us any update on, on the future of Rampage. As we know, Dynamite and Collision are being renewed as part of the new deal, but it's unclear if, if Rampage is going to continue to be a weekly TV show in 2025. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, as it, I'm still working on our media rights. We got a great, great deal done with Warner Brothers Discovery. It's a massive increase in our revenue, making several times more uh and producing the, the four hours of television that you referenced with Dynamite every Wednesday on TBS, also now streaming on Max, and Collision every week on TNT, also streaming on Max. Uh, for Rampage, it's been something I really enjoy doing since 2021. In the deal we got where it's focused on these four hours of television, it's not currently in the package of our Warner Brothers Discovery uh, media rights deal. I think going forward, there's a lot of opportunities for AEW, and we've talked about trying to grow the brand 
internationally and domestically. And uh, as far as Rampage goes, that show or potentially other AEW content, there are a lot of places it could it could live. All of our focus in 2024 on the business side had to be on our media rights renewal with Warner Brothers Discovery. They've been our partner from day one, and the most important thing that we could do was extend that huge relationship for us. And I've spent a lot of time working with Mr. David Zasloff and Bruce Campbell and the great team at Warner Brothers Discovery throughout this year uh, working to keep AEW at TBS and TNT. It's important to us and it's important to Mr. Zasloff who told me so. And uh, it means a lot to be wanted and to be valued as part of the family. And we got a big meteorites renewal with a big increase for AEW and the revenue puts AEW in a great position. And it also allows us to add new value I think we've done really well for TBS and TNT for viewership for several years. And we continue to be a top show with Dynamite on TBS and Collision on TNT. And going forward, uh, we can add even more value now as a streaming property on Max. Rampage is a show I love and I've loved doing the past three years. As far as where it lives or what AEW shows outside of Dynamite and Collision uh, will be running next year, I think that's still something that remains uh, to be revealed. And we're still working on things, but the the biggest things for us are the things we've accomplished with uh, announcing the Dynamite and Collision and uh, the, the plans for streaming on Max. Uh, and and I think everyone should stay tuned as to the future of Rampage or other AEW program. Thanks for asking, Brandon. Thank you, Tony. We are going to close with Brian Zellum of PW Torch. Brian. Brian, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Tony, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Brian. Uh, good to talk to you, Tony. Uh, Tony, I, I know it's so early. I don't know if you have any available numbers to share, but the uh, all-in VIP packages uh, came on sale uh, officially as today. Do you have any available numbers to share as far as um, sales so far? And do you have an idea of the amount of tickets are, that are going to be available as far as the setup for all-in going into next year? Thank you. Uh well, uh, I don't have all the numbers right now. I, I think uh, it's going to be a great, great event for us. We're really excited about this on sale. Uh, it, I expect uh, it will be a huge success, AW All in Texas. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's in line to do numbers that would compete with the very best events that have been there. Big, you know, some of the biggest games and concerts and events that uh, have been held there at Globe Life. Uh, I am very optimistic about it. I don't have all the numbers in front of me right now, Brian, but uh, but certainly we expect it will be one of our biggest shows of all time and one of the biggest events ever at that stadium. Thank you, Brian. Tony, any closing thoughts here before we wrap? Thanks, man. Uh, Yes, I really appreciate all of you joining us. This is a, a very exciting time. Uh, AEW Full Gear is one of my favorite events. Uh, I know when I walk into the Prudential Center, I'm going to have that big fight feel. You know, I walk in there and you're like, wow, this is full gear. This is a big deal. Um, I remember uh, walking into the Target Center in 2021, walking into the Prudential Center uh, 2022, you know, and, and going into the forum last year and every time it's like, man, this, this is a big show. This is a big deal. It feels like a major event. And it's also a time of the year, this holiday week coming up, it's very conducive to pro wrestling. 
hopefully uh, you'll all enjoy Full Gear. I think it's going to be a great event. Uh, and if I was not able to answer any questions today, if, if you can join us on the weekend, we'll try to get your questions answered there, however possible. I really appreciate all of you covering us. I think uh, from the very beginning of AEW, it would not have been possible for us to have this growth and success without great outlets and great people like you covering us from the very beginning and giving us the opportunity. So thank you for that. And thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll all be able to see full gear. And I really hope you all enjoy full gear as a wrestling show. And thank you for what you do covering wrestling. Uh, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day and uh, hopefully you all uh, enjoy full gear on the weekend. Thanks for joining me for the media call today. Thank you, Tony, and thanks, everybody. We're now at the end of our time, so we'll be distributing an audio recording to all attendees shortly. And again, we thank you for being a part of today's call. We're looking forward to you joining us for AEW Full Gear this Saturday. Have a great rest of your Thursday and have a great weekend.